As a manager, you should prepare the schedule for your employees. In this regard, making a schedule in Excel is a great way to create an error-free schedule. This will help to keep track of your employees on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. Hello everyone, welcome to Excel Demi, your day-to-day -day Excel and VBA tutorial helpline. This is Hathi Basher, and today I'll demonstrate how to make a schedule for employees in Excel. For this video, I will use Microsoft Excel 365. In the first example, I will create a daily schedule for my employees. Here is the data set. This includes the date, the employee name, the starting time of their shift, the ending time of their shift, and their break time. I will calculate the total hours worked by the employees, that is the time difference between the shift end time and the shift start time. Finally, I will fill up the task column with the task of each employees. Now to calculate the total hours, go to cell G5, type equal. The total hours is the difference between the shift end time and the shift start time. So select the cell E5 minus select the cell D5 and hit enter. As a result, the total hours for the first employee is calculated. Now let me use the autofill feature to calculate the total hours for all the employees. And this returns the total hours for this company. The regular working hour is 8 hours long. However, the total hours of some employees are less than 8 hours. So, I will apply conditional formatting to highlight those values. To do so, as the cells G5 to G16 are selected, so from the Home tab, in the Styles section, click on Conditional Formatting. This opens the available options for conditional formatting. As I want to highlight the cells, so go to Highlight Cells Rules, and from the available options, choose the option less than. This opens the less than window. In the format cells that are less than filled, I will enter the regular work hour that is 8 hour. You should enter your suitable regular work hour. Now as the formatting option, click on this drop down icon. Here you will find different available formattings. You can choose any option according to your choice. In this case, I will stick with the default formatting that is light red fill with dark red text. Now to apply the formatting, click on OK and you can see the formatting is applied to the cells. As a result, you can easily distinguish the work hours that are less than the regular work hours. Now I'll fill up the tux column. To do so, I'll use data validation. First of all, select the cells H5 to H16. Then move to the data tab. From the data tools section, click on data validation. This opens the data validation window. In the settings tab, from the validation criteria, in the allow field, click on this drop down icon and here you'll find different available data validation options. In my case, I'll create a list and choose the value from that list. So I'm clicking on the list option. In the source field, let me create the list of my tasks. The list is complete. Now click on OK to apply the data validation. You can see the data validation is applied. And drop down icon has appeared next to the cell H5. If you click on this drop down icon, here you will find the list we have just created. You can choose the options from this list. Let me quickly fill up the column by choosing the options from the list. Select the option Attend Meeting, and you can see cell H5 contains the value Attend Meeting. Now move to the next cell, click on this drop down icon and choose the task. In this way, you can fill up this column. That's it. In this way, you can create the daily schedule of your employees. In this example, I will create the weekly schedule for my employees. This dataset includes the starting time of the office as well as the ending time and the allowed break duration. Then in column B, you will find the name of the day and the weekends are highlighted to distinguish them. Finally, I have splitted the work hours before the break time and after the break time. Now to assign the task, I will use the data validation option. So let me select the cells before the break time. Press and hold the control key and select the cells after the break time. Next, move to the data tab. From the data tools section, click on data validation. 
The data validation window is open. In the settings tab, from the validation criteria in the allow field, I will create the list again. So click on this drop down icon and choose the option list. In the source field, I will type the name of the task. As I have typed all the names, now click on OK to create the data validation. As a result, the data validation is applied. Now you can use the data validation to create this weekly schedule. For example, select cell C7 and you can see the drop down icon has appeared. Now click on this drop down icon and choose the task accordingly. In this way, you can use data validation to create your weekly schedule. In the last example, I will create a monthly schedule for the employees. Here in the data set, the cell B5 will contain the schedule starting day. In column C, you will find the employee names. And from column D to column AH, there will be the date of the month. Then, against each date, you will record the employee status. X for the presence of the employee. On the other hand, a blank cell means the employee is absent on that day. Finally, I will format the absence values with this shade of light red color and the weekends in row 4 will be formatted with this color. Then I will calculate the number of working employees and absent employees on each date. Now let me first enter the schedule starting date. In my case, the starting date will be the first date of the month. However, you should enter the date according to your requirements. Before typing the value, I will set the number formatting. To do so, go to the home tab. From the numbers section, click on this drop down icon and here you will find different available number formats. As I will set a custom format, so go to more number formats. This opens the format sales window. In the numbers section, from the category, click on custom and in the type field, set the type as D hyphen three letters of the month hyphen last two digits of the year. Now to apply the formatting, click on OK. Finally, go to cell B5 and type the date. So our starting date will be May 1, 2023. Now I'll set the dates of this month in row 4. So select the cell D4. In this case, we need to set the number formatting. So move to the home tab from the number section. Click on this drop down icon. And as I will set a custom formatting, so go to more number formats. The format sales window is open. From the number section in the category option, click on custom and set the type as D. This type will return the date of cell B5 in cell D4. Now to set the formatting, click on OK. Now move to cell D4, type equal and select the cell B5. Then hit enter. You can see the formula has returned 1 in cell D4. Next, we need to get all the remaining days. So go to cell E4, type equal, select the cell D4, add 1 with this value and hit enter. And this returns 2. Now let me quickly get the date values by using the fill handle. In this way, we have all the dates of the month May 2023. From these dates, I need to distinguish the weekends. To do so, I will use the weekday function. So go to cell D3 and I will use the values of cells row 3 as a helper row to distinguish the weekends. So in cell D3, type equal, type the weekday function. The weekday function returns the number in the range of 1 to 7 to label the day of a week. Here, 1 indicates Sunday. On the other hand, 7 indicates Saturday. Press tab to autocomplete the weekday function. As the serial number argument of the weekday function, select the cell D4. Close the parentheses of this function and hit enter. You can see the formula has returned 2 in cell D3. This means May 1, 2023 is Monday. Now use the autofill feature to get the number for all the dates. From the list, we can say that May 6 is Sunday and May 7 is Saturday. Now based on these values, I will format the values of D4 to AH4 to distinguish the weekends. For that reason, select the cells D4 to AH4 and I will apply conditional formatting. So from the home tab, in the styles section, click on conditional formatting. This opens the conditional formatting options. I will create a new rule. To apply conditional formatting, the new formatting rule window is open. From the selected rule type option, I will use a formula. So 
Choose the option Use a formula to determine which cells to format. In the Edit Tool description section, in the Format values where this formula is true field, click on this field, type the formula equal or D3 is equals to 1, D3 is equals to 7. This formula will check the values of row 3 and if the value is 1 or 7, then it will format the corresponding cells from row 4. Now click on the format option and this opens the format cells window. From the fill section, as I will format the weekends with this color, so choose the color and you can see a sample of the color in the sample field. You can choose any color according to your choice. Now click on OK to close the format cells window. Finally, click on OK to apply the formatting and you can see that the formatting is applied to the cells. Now, I will format the dataset to distinguish the absence values. To do so, select the entire dataset, go to the Home tab, from the Styles section, click on Conditional Formatting. As I will highlight the cells, so go to Highlight Cells Rules, and from the available options, choose the option Equal To. This opens the Equal To window. As the absence value is blank, so in the format cells that are equal to field, type 0. As a result, you can see a preview of the formatting. The default formatting option is the light red fill with dark red text. You can click on this drop down icon and choose any option according to your choice. In my case, I will stick with the default formatting. So to apply the formatting, click on OK. As a result, the formatting is applied to this data set and the absence values are formatted accordingly. Now I will count the number of working employees. So go to cell D12, type equal. I will use the COUNTIF function, so type the COUNTIF function. The COUNTIF function counts the number of cells within a selected range that meet your given condition. As a range argument of the COUNTIF function, I will select the cells D5 to D11, place a comma. As I will count the number of X values in the selected range, so as the criteria argument of this function, I will type X. Now close the parenthesis and hit enter. You can see the formula has returned 4. Now to calculate the absent employees, go to cell D13, type equal. As there are 7 employees in my worksheet, so I will subtract the number of working employees from 7. So type 7, minus, and select the cell D12, and hit enter. As a result, you will get the number of absent employees. Now let me use the autofill feature to quickly get these values for the entire dataset. Our monthly schedule is ready to some extent. However, we can make the helper values invisible. So select the cells D3 to AH3. Go to the Home tab. From the Font section, click on this Font Color option. Now, set white as the font color and this makes the values of the helper cells invisible. And our monthly schedule is complete now. I have demonstrated the step-by-step -step guide for creating a schedule for the employees in Excel. You can download the practice workbook from the video description to sharpen your Excel skills. Feel free to leave any questions, suggestions or feedback in the comment section below. You can go to exceldemy.com to read our Excel blogs or you can share your Excel related issues in our Excel Demi forum and receive free solutions. For more content like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching our video. Bye.